Hey guys, I hope you're doing well today. So I just wanted to start off with a nice, beautiful picture of my cat named Dilly. I figured we'd start off on a good note <laughs> instead of straight into Katie. No, I just took this picture because she's just laying there all proud and she always has to have her feet touching the window when she's on top of the chair. <laughs> I don't know what it is. And her legs are so long. It's like long, sexy legs. <laughs> I can just picture her in high heels. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the, uh, this might be a long one. Um, oh my god, I'm gonna have to split this into two videos because there's a lot of friggin' posts uh, that Katie has done. And oh my god, we're gonna start off with how apparently the doggers lie to us and the shiny happy people lie to us, okay? This one made me furious because she does not know the facts whatsoever. She cannot get information from CPS. She needs to shut up, is what she needs to do. All right, here we go. Again, she says, friends. Friends, it's time to be very honest. A documentary about the doggers lied to you about Anna. They told, they told that she's brainwashed. They told that she's brainwashed and doesn't know about her husband's crimes. They lied. <laughs> That's not what they said. Not a single person that spoke about Anna knew her position. They made assumptions based upon their own experiences, just like you're making assumptions right now because you think you know better. Without a crystal ball has interviewed dozens of people about Josh Duggar's crimes. Really? Where are they? The U.S. attorney spoke about Anna's interference at his detention hearing. She is not innocent and she is not brainwashed. She knows. Right, Katie, because you're in Anna's brain. Listen to this shit. This is a full-blown lie. Facts. Anna refused to allow CPS to interview her children. To date, none of her children have been forensically interviewed by CPS. You don't know that? Because you're not allowed to know that. And you're never going to know that. And for you to even bring that up makes you the biggest piece of shit there is. U.S. Attorney <laughs> made clear that they believe Josh's kids are victims, but they have no evidence. Really? If that were the case, if this, what the CPS and the police thought, those kids would have been examined. Do you have any idea what you're putting into the atmosphere right now, you dumb fuck? Do you have any idea? If these children were in fact touched, they definitely would have been looked at, okay, Mouth? You don't say these things and would want a child to be examined for CSAM. But no, when it comes to you, that's your boner, isn't it? You love to talk about this stuff. You laugh, you smile, you seriously have a fucked up opinion on life. I'll tell you that. Many women are co-conspirators in crimes of CSAM. Wow. Okay, so now you're saying Anna was part and parcel to Josh Duggar's crimes? Really? So she helped with the porn videos? Is that what you're trying to say? Or she helped with the molestation of her fucking children, you fucking bitch. Wow. Liz, I can't. Anna actively aided and abetted Josh in attempting to cover up and frame others for his crimes. No, she didn't. Or else she'd be in prison too. She made phone calls to witnesses to attempt to persuade them to remember things differently. <laughs> Anna berates and verbally abuses people that implore her to stop protecting Josh. Really, where's the evidence? I've yet to see it. She also makes people's lives miserable to speak out against Josh. Who? She's with Josh's family. Who is she telling in Josh's family? Because she has nobody else. Who is she telling other people, making other people's lives miserable? Who, Katie? None. You want to know why? Because she's not. Anna sat through all the evidence. She knows that Josh is guilty. She says that Josh is innocent, but her actions all indicate that she knows he's guilty. No, her actions don't. Her actions, to me, scream of a seriously, really unhappy individual who's so sad, possibly depressed, has all these kids and her husband's in jail for crimes she truly believes he didn't commit. That's what I think. Josh had multiple smartphones despite Anna publicly claiming Josh would never have one again. She wouldn't know, you stupid idiot. Oh yeah, okay. She, she would claim that because she doesn't know. Josh was a, nor, a known porn consumer and he kept this hidden from no one. Really? Then why wasn't he in jail before? Anna called Carlin Bates and asked her to remember her purchase of, of a car different. Carlin purchased a car from Josh Duggar and Anna tried to bully her to tell authorities she purchased the car from Josh Williams. That's your favorite word, isn't it? CSAM and bully. 
Anna knows. She knows who her husband is and she knows what he's done. She knows. Yeah, she, you're, you're right. She does, but she doesn't believe it. She's not innocent. Really, Katie? So now you're trying to get Anna locked up. Just like you try to get Christine Brown locked up for burying her fucking personal miscarried in the backyard. Yeah, you guys remember that. Now she's going after Anna. Not enough wine in the house tonight? She's playing innocent. No. She is, in fact, innocent. The number of people that have contacted me about being verbally abused and harassed by Anna related to Josh is the double did. No, it's not. Stop lying. She's not meek or mild. Yes, she is. Stop enabling Anna. Anna will never, never protect her kids from Josh and the feds know this. Then why aren't they taking away their mouth? Huh? You think you fucking know everything. Why aren't, why isn't she in prison alongside her fucking husband? Hmm? Why does she still have her children? Why haven't they been taken away? You're sick, Katie. Here's some comments. You do realize in the interview, Anna said she knew about Josh's crimes. Exactly. However, I don't think she knew the entire story. Exactly. I don't recall any documentary claiming Amy was brainwashed and doesn't know about his, her husband's crimes. Exactly. This one says, can I ask, why didn't CPS or the police just take the kids to interview them? You see, because that's not public information. That's why. So you guys don't know if she did or if she, if they did or didn't. It's not for your eyeballs. It's none of your fucking business. I would think under the circumstances, this would be a given. It actually blows my mind. I'm in Australia. So if someone could explain, it's, is it a weird law? No, honey, you're listening to the wrong person. That's what the problem is here. She must have gotten a lawyer. Two of my daughters work with child services. And I can tell you, they go into the home with the police if need be. Exactly. <laughs> there was no signed order by a judge to force the children to be interviewed. A judge would have had to sign an order to, in order to make Anna let the kids be interviewed by the police, taking them or DHS entering the home to have it done. There was no signed order. Ding, ding. This does not surprise me, but I do not understand why she stays with him or waits for him or supports him because in her world, that is her husband. You stand by your husband, okay? And she does not believe that he's done these things. Mouth says, because she's his co-conspirator? Really? Oh my God, you're so disgusting, KJ. Somebody get his wife some electric shock therapy. Shock her back to reality. You guys are disgusting. She may be as evil as he is. At first I blamed her faith, but in, but in more. Putting out accusations like this is dangerous, not to mention illegal. Keep that in mind before giving such bold, inaccurate opinions. Yes, thank you, Brandy. You have a brain. I doubt that statement that many women are involved in CSAM crimes is correct. Do you have statistics? As far as I know, women committing these crimes, even as co-conspirators with partners, is exception and not even close to the norm. Right. Did you by chance see Amy's TikTok last night about seeing Anna at a friend's visitation? She posts the link. Wow, those kids need to be taken away. Why? Because she said she needed the space? Have you guys actually been watching what KJ and Amy have been doing to this woman? Clearly, you're not paying attention at all. You just listen to what KJ says. And that's what makes you fuckers part and parcel with KJ. Oh, for sure. For many reasons. She's probably just a miserable person to be around. Wouldn't you be? Your husband's in prison. Nobody will leave you fuck alone. You got Amy and her side of the family trying to say that she will take them in. She will help them. Yet constantly talking behind her back and giving constant interviews. I agree she probably is. After seeing the documentary, the shiny happy people said, they said the CEO of Hobby Lobby gives lots of money to Bill Gother for his cult. I have not stepped foot in that place. Now, since the Duggars are in charge of the cult, he's probably giving them, to, giving them the money. They are not actually in charge of that cult and are not receiving that money. So there's another accusation you guys need to watch yourself for. Why can't Amy contact local CPS and report on the children beside of oldest daughter bawling? Sounds like the kids are needing some help. Why? Because the kid's having a tantrum? Because the kid's upset? Because the mother said, I need my space? I would imagine Amy has tried. Actually, I would imagine, no, she hasn't. So sad for the kids. 100. What I don't understand is this. The sites he was on required sharing of content. So in order for him to download, he needed to upload his own content. Is this enough reason for authorities to just examine his children without the mother's consent? It is not a law for them to intervene if suspected CA has occurred. Wow. I've been wondering, can authorities step in to demand interviews and exams of the kids, especially since Josh has been, been for guilty? 
He's been arrested. He's in prison, has been there a long time. What would be the point of them now coming in and torturing those poor kids? Leave them the fuck alone. And you want to know something? Josh Dogger's not the only one who watched Daisy's Destruction. KJ watched it. And you idiots are fucking clapping her back. Say, oh yeah, go KJ, you're taking down the cult. Name one cult she's taken down because she hasn't taken down shit. The only cult she knows full well of is her own. <laughs> Here we go. Jill, Ginger, and Amy Duggar have all referenced the passing of a friend of the family this week. Yeah. Isn't this sick? This person passed away at age whatever after a battle with cancer. She was a social media blogger and influencer, according to her obituary in 2009. She started a blog for her family and friends, teaching them to ha how to save money on everyday essentials. She was a pioneer in the blogging community and social media marketing. She rebranded the blog from blah blah to blah blah after realizing its potential reach and has amassed over 274 million page views by helping families save money and manage their budgets. She loved to say, save where you can so you can spend where you want. And she loved to spend a family on family vacations. Her influence was far reaching over 1.7 million followers on social, various social media platforms. She was always in tune with her audience and recognized the need to help families simplify their lives through meal planning and time management which led her to creating blah, blah. She's the sister of Travis Story, who was Josh Duggar's defense attorney in his criminal case. Exactly. Why would you do this? She and her husband also attended Cross Church, with the Duggars were members of it for a short time. Jill and Derek were members of Cross Church for years prior to the recent moment. Who gives a shit? It's none of your business. Leave them alone. Amy Duggar King is very close friends with Heather's sister, Julie. Oh, wow, Katie. The Duggar family has been friends with the Story family for a long time. Travis Story remains the attorney for Josh, along with co-counsel Justin Gel Gelfin. Travis has also represented many members of the LWP and associates of the Duggars. Don't worry, I know. Because he may or may not have, Travis Story may or may not have, got all the evidence of this bullshit that you did. Her funeral is this morning. She is remembered as a passionate, loving woman that is actively involved in our church and with numerous charities to help children. She survived. Doesn't matter. Sharing as information only? No, you're sharing because you're a piece of shit. Wow, Travis posts. <sighs> she was passionate about second milk and they work, they do. You guys can read that if you want to. But look at all this shit. Wow. This is the obituary. Oh yeah, ghost pictures again. Cody Brown's brothers attempted to degrade me by calling me Miss Crystal Ball. That's degrading? You call yourself Crystal Ball. <laughs> Miss is being very polite if you ask me. <gasps> no, where'd it go? There we go. This week has been very entertaining as I have been involved in a rather interesting email exchange with two of Cody Brown's younger brothers. Really? This started off just fine. They asked me to do me to be on their podcast, but I wasn't keen on discussing the topic that they wanted to discuss. That's because you were never asked. I guarantee fucking to you. You think they're going to ask you after you trash their, their family every day? No. Nah. But then they wanted to know what I thought of their brother. I was honest that I felt like 99.9% .9 of the general population that doesn't like Cody. No, they asked you, not what you thought. Find him to be abusive, narcissistic, and exploitative of his wives and kids. Wow, you guys match then. This is a summary and not all that was said. I wasn't rude and I reminded them that my feelings about Cody were irrelevant to the topic of the podcast. There you have it. That's why they didn't want her on. Because she was rude. Guaranteed. How, and yeah, exactly. Things start off fine. They always do with you, Katie. And then you fuck it up with that big fat mouth of yours and you dox and you stalk and you harass. You pull financials. You pour, pull court records. Medical. Like you're disgusting. When the fuck are you going to realize no one likes you? You need to be off the internet. Get a real job. McDonald's would be perfect for you. Uh, this is the summary, not all what I said. I wasn't, oh yeah, I wasn't rude, blah, blah, blah. It took them five days to respond to me. Really? And I am 99.99% .99 confident during that time they spoke to Cody. Their response to me reminded me so much of how Cody speaks to his wives. <laughs> wow. They even went as far to accuse me 
exploiting harm caused by calls because of my reports about polygamous calls and other harmful cards. That's exactly why they're accusing you of being rude and stuff because you do do that. You, I guarantee you went in there, guns blazing, demanding what you wanted. And yeah, it would have took five days because they're like, I don't fucking think so. They also cited irrelevant data about how men are under attack and that it's important for men to feel uplifted because society is trying to destroy them. Really? How is it irrelevant? Because you said so? No, it doesn't work that way. At the end, they called me Miss Ball, Miss Crystal Ball. Yeah, that's being severely polite. I got serious Cody vibes when he got pissy at Christine for having an opinion about packing. He called her Miss Independent. <laughs> I then had a visual of Cody rage typing in response to his brothers to have them send to me. Why do you type this shit when it didn't happen? I brought up the A, B, U, S, C of their nieces and nephews by Cody and they didn't address the issue and, ac and accused me of being the explorer. Because you are! They are spot on! Anyway, I'll be sharing the entire exchange later. Of course you will. Again, you will because you're disgusting. I just want to say that I've spoken to some Brown family members and some are super nice. Others like Cody's brothers have true hatred for women. I, no, they have pure hatred for you because of what you do, what you've said. I stand by everything I said about Cody. I even implored them to think about their nieces and nephews who have come out with stories of ABUSC. They said nothing because they don't... Oh my God, Katie. I feel badly for the children raised in this cult. Why? Really? You don't feel bad for any of them. You don't feel any bad for any of the Duggar victims. You want to know why? Because you exploit them for fucking money. They don't deserve this and no woman should be abusively, abusively referred to as Miss Crystal Ball to flex their power. Again, that is the nicest thing in the world they could have called you considering what the fuck you are. Stay tuned. Reserve judgment. This whole exchange is a mess of absolute nonsense. Hilarious, extremely disturbing. Yeah, I wonder how many um, copy and paste and cuts and everything else she did to it. They always attack the one putting forth the box. They see you as a threat. We are listening to you. I bet. I love how you get so many sources. I can't wait to see this video. I think that's a joke. <laughs> oh, probably Monday. I'm waiting to see if they will respond to my 20-page response with sources and statistics. 20-page. No one's going to read that because it's from you. No one's going to read it. They'll know it would be awful lies and bullshit. And that's funny because if you can actually literally send a 20-page response with sources and statistics, 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 why is it that you can't comply with 7M then? Huh? I think you need to get your priorities straight. Do most of your sources reach out to you or is it the other way around? I really respect your reporting due to your many sources. That's got to be a joke. My first thought was, did they stupidly think your name was Crystal Ball? And at least you have the balls to stand up to the type of people who only want supporters to go on their podcast. I really have no interest in debating hyperbolic theories and manosphere bullshit. Wow. They are probably as evil and awful as their brother. I don't think Cody having nips and tox, Botox fillers, etc. is going to help him get a young wife at all. Those days are gone. Have been reading a book by a former member of the AUB. It's a Cody and Janelle, our stepbrother and sister. I'm trying to remember if you have mentioned that before. This one says, yeah, she and other commenters have discussed it. It was in the show. Mouth says, they were, but they weren't raised together as siblings. Her mom joined the cult when Janelle was an adult. This one says, yeah, still gross. Of course, Janelle was also married to Mary's brother before Cody. Mitch and Aspen are third cousins. Cody and Christine are fourth cousins. Christine is first cousins with Robin's children from a previous uh, marriage. Then she says, have you read Rebecca Kimball's book about the AUB? Absolutely fascinating and explains exactly why Cody and the former wives are, why they are or were. Mouse says, I have read her book. I recommend the book to my audience several months ago. Okay. This girl didn't know that. She's asking a question. This man needs something and it's not more wives. They may think your name is actually Crystal Ball. Mary has called you that. Mouse says, nope, they called me Katie up until that point. That was funny, eh? Don't you mean blah, blah? This mouse says, nope. Um, okay, Crystal, blah, 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 mouse did say, so it depends. Lots of them come to me directly, but some are referred from other sources. So one source will say, I need you to talk to this person. And then I reached out to that person. Yeah, okay, more like stock. Why do I have this so many times? I'd swear it. 
as a badge of honor. Ha ha. Signing off every post with Miss Crystal Ball. Spin it on them. They want you to take offense. Mouse says, probably going to make a shirt. Oh, I bet. You dumb fucks are going to buy it. Yes, just like, what would the nanny do hysterical? I love that idea. I think Miss Crystal Ball sounds wonderful, though I would change it to MS and really get them so mad. Oh my god, this fucking girl. Please listen, the laws apply to everyone. No shit, what are you, a, law a lawyer and a cop now? Oh my god. Without a crystal ball does not care who breaks the law. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you care about if the, somebody has their toe over the line where they're not supposed to be so you can rat on them. That's what you are. You're a rat. When a former president is charged with over 70 felonies in multiple cases, we will cover this situation. No. KJ will cover the... <laughs> fuck. Who talks about themselves in third person, really? And again, posting about politics. Are you serious? Sorry, I just want to make sure if I should end this video now and... No, might as well keep going. Donald Trump. Sorry. Without a crystal ball, does not care who breaks the law. When a former president's charge was over 70 felonies in multiple cases, we will cover this situation. Donald Trump was a reality TV star that was on The Apprentice, which made him so popular that America voted him into office. No, I don't believe that for a second. A reality TV star became president and broke the law. Just like Biden did, Katie. He's the only president to ever be indicted, ever. If any other president had done what he did, they would have been arrested. Trump has indoctrinated and brainwashed his followers to believe that he's the only answer. Everyone is out together and the media is false and lying. Everything is fake news. That's you, girl. Deflection and lying and everything is fake news. To, uh, deflection to his rivals is standard and facts do not matter. This is what you do. I watched, not I, I watched an interview last night with a historical scholar who described the USA in the midst of an existential crisis where the choice is between those that believe in democracy and those that want an authoritarian dictator. Every single witness interviewed by the grand jury in Trump's January 6, 2021 case was Republican. 87 Republican witnesses testified against him. <laughs> Every witness in the, in the document case is also a Republican. Democrats are not witnesses nor involved in these cases. This is not political, it's criminal. No, you're fucking criminal, actually. I will not stop reporting on Trump and his cult followers of extremists, just like I won't stop reporting on you and your bullshit and your cult. Trump embraces white supremacist groups, so does your husband, and uses them to do his dirty work. Your husband is a white supremacist. Um, wow. Your husband was involved in a racist label for his record label. Remember that? You lied about the dates that he left. He, when you he got called out, he was still in that record label. Trump is not a Republican. He's a psychopath that only cares about himself. That, again, ding, ding, that's you, Katie. If Biden, did, if Biden did what Trump did, I would report it too. No, you wouldn't. You would suck his ass and make it sugarcoated is what you would do. But Biden, nor any other U.S. president, have done anything comparable. The only other U.S. president that came close was Richard Nixon. I won't be silenced to stop reporting on a cult leader who was a reality star because both of those topics are covered here. No proof of a cult. Again, you're running a cult. This is ridiculous. Cult Education Institute calls Trump cult leader. I cover cults. Trump is like every other cult leader that I cover with their stupid fucking emoji. The cult of Trump. No, more like the cult of Katie. The leader is always right. Mm -hmm. Criticism or questioning the leader is seen as persecution and attack of the leader. Yeah, that's you, Katie. Anything the leader does is justifiable no matter how harmful. That's you, Katie. Followers obsess over the leader and the group, resulting in the exclusion of all other consideration. That's again in you, Katie. The leader, the group, and those they endorse are the exclusive source of truth. No other sources are acceptable or credible. That again is you, Katie. Here's some comments. Politics on both sides has become cultish in this country. All of these qualities can be ascribed to Biden supporters as well. Exactly. We are manipulated into choosing sides by our media. Our only hope is to meet in the middle. The type of rhetoric is dangerous and keeps people divided. I love this page for before politics became the main topic. <laughs> wow, it's scary how accurate this is. Katie, this is not good for your channel. You're going to lose a lot of people. I fucking hope she does. Katie, no. I'm sorry you feel that way. You know Biden stole millions. All these changes the left have brought against him have never been brought to fruit fruition. Listen to both sides, then make your judgment. I'm sorry to have to subscribe to your YouTube channel. I was a loyal fan. Believe me, you picked the wrong subject. 
This one says, this is a form of groupthink. I have followed you for years. Goodbye. Our democracy will never be... I don't even know. This person says, um, you would not be reporting on this if it was Biden for real, KJ. I hope you know Biden wants to ban certain light bulbs in homes and allow LED only. He also wants to ban gas stoves. You think everyone can afford a new electric stove when their gas one goes out? Also, we're a republic. Where did he say he would do away with the Constitution? I need a direct quote. People don't vote for him because he was on The Apprentice. Laugh my ass off. Wait, what? He uses white supremacist groups to do his bidding. See the shit that she posts and these idiots believe her? Please show a source on that. The one I have, I haven't heard yet. I think I'm at the end. Woohoo! Okay, I'm at the end. Sorry about all the swear words, guys, but I've, uh, I'm really pissed off today. Really, really, really mad. She, uh, she did some, this shit that she keeps doing and getting away with, I fucking had it. I've had it. Anyways, you guys let me know what you think in the comment section. And I'll be back tomorrow. Bye, guys.